for today's video we're taking a look at a vintage Mackinon 24mm f2.8 m42 screw fit lens which is really hazy and in need of its optics being cleaned. I bought this lens a while ago and the first time I put it on the camera it was immediately apparent that it had a really nasty milky hazy flare. I was doing a shoot at the time so I just put it back in my lens bag and forgot about it. When I needed it again recently, I put it on the camera and was quickly reminded that it needs some attention. On a casual glance it looks relatively clean, but with more careful inspection one of the inner elements has some haze on it, so it needs to come apart to be cleaned, and that's what we're going to do today. As an example, if you compare these two bits of footage, the first bit was shot using a Shinon 28mm lens, and then the second slightly wider bit was shot using the Mackinon, and you can see how really milky and lacking contrast the Mackinon lens is. It's probably a good idea if you're planning to take some lenses apart and you haven't done it before to practice on something that you don't really care about, possibly just buy a cheap secondhand old lens, because there's plenty that can go wrong and you really don't want to try it on your favourite lens. In fact, with a really good expensive lens I think I'd be reluctant to touch it myself, I think I'd just send it to someone to get it fixed, but with some of my relatively affordable vintage lenses, they're pretty simple and I'm quite happy to take them apart myself. There aren't too many specialist tools you're likely to need, but something you could probably do with is a lens wrench. They generally have a slotted end and a pointed end to suit the different types of lens securing rings. You can space the wrench apart to suit all the different sizes of lens, and they're not too pricey to buy. I think I got this one off eBay for, I don't know, about 10 or 12 pounds. So, to remove the front element, I need to undo the retaining ring using the lens wrench in these notches on the ring itself. But before I can take the ring off on this particular lens, the front bezel needs to come off first. I'll just put the rear lens cap back on to keep that end of the lens safe while I work on the front end. To remove the bezel, I usually place a sheet of rubber on the bench to create friction. I then place the lens face down on the rubber sheet and turn it anti-clockwise, and this unscrews the bezel itself. Once the bezel is loose, you can turn it over and unscrew it the rest of the way just using your fingers. Next, to remove the retaining ring itself. Due to the curvature of the front element on this lens, I'm not going to use the slotted end of the wrench because it could actually touch the glass, so I'll use the pointed end and set it to the correct spacing. It's a bit precarious on this lens, and not made easier by having to work round the camera and tripod. It's worth noting that removing the lens elements for cleaning doesn't usually involve any work on the focusing helicoid. If you ever need to work on one of these, make sure you're aware of what you need to do before taking the lens apart, or you could be in for a lot of pain trying to get the lens to focus correctly again. Once the ring is loose, I'll then turn it the rest of the way using the blade of a screwdriver, which is a bit easier than using the lens wrench. So now it's time to remove the front element. I like to use a suction pen for this job. These are sold for removing chips on circuit boards when you desolder them, but they also work rather well for removing lens elements. You can theoretically tip the lens elements out onto a soft cloth, but depending on the lens you're working on you might get more than one element come out at a time, and if you get multiple elements come out you might not be able to tell what order they were in or which way round they were. You'll then have the fun game of juggling the position of the elements, trying to get the lens to work correctly again. I've heard of people buying second-hand lenses on eBay, and when they try them out the lens wouldn't focus at all because they've been dismantled for cleaning and then reassembled in the wrong order. And now, having removed the front two elements, we can unscrew the main optic housing. There's a small grub screw that locks this housing in place that I forgot to film, but you'll need to unscrew this before proceeding. And then it's simply a case of slackening the housing with the lens wrench and unscrewing it the rest of the way by hand, and then you can remove it. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we can remove the inner retaining ring within the optic housing. I can already see the haze on one of these elements, so once this section is dismantled, I can start the cleaning process. It's a little fiddly, so I'll just proceed slowly and carefully until the retaining ring comes out. And now it's just a case of removing the two elements from this section, being very careful to note the orientation as they come out, because again, this is an easy bit to assemble the wrong way round. As an experiment, I put the rear of these two elements back in the wrong way round just to see how much difference it would make. And here are two shots that are more or less identical, the first one taken with the element the correct way round and the second with it reversed. The difference shows up at the edges which are more distorted and blurry with the element the wrong way round. Both shots were taken before I'd cleaned the optics, so the lens wasn't at its best for either of the shots. So now we can actually get on with cleaning the optics themselves. I've not had to deal with any particularly severe fungus in any of my lenses, and I've always got away with just using washing up liquid and warm water to clean the glass elements. Make sure your hands are clean before you start work, and have some good quality tissue on hand to press the lens dry when you're finished. I do a final clean with a good quality lens cloth before reinstalling the elements. I also clean the inside of the lens barrel with alcohol to get rid of any contaminants from in there. This lens, like many, has, or at least had, a black lacquer or ink on the edges of the glass to reduce stray light bouncing around. This washed off during cleaning. I may strip the lens again in the future and re-ink the edges if I think it's causing a problem, but for now I'll leave it as it is. Now, having cleaned all of the front and middle elements, we can start to reassemble the lens. Starting off with the rear element, which I did the experiment on to see what would happen when I reversed it. And then its spacer, followed by the larger domed element, and the lock ring. The lock rings don't want to be too tight, just enough to hold the lens in place and not rattle loose. Next in is the second from front element. This one has a loose metal ring that sits round the element in its socket. And finally the front element can go back in, followed by its lock ring. It's easier to wind the lock ring in using the blade of a screwdriver, leaving the lens wrench just for the final tightening. And now we can reinstall the optic housing in the lens body itself, tighten it into place using the lens wrench, and nip up the grub screw in the side that keeps the optic housing from unscrewing. Last but not least, the front bezel can be refitted and tightened into place by putting the lens face down on the rubber sheet and rotating it clockwise. So now that the lens is back together, I'll pop it onto a camera and give it a good test. If we look at these before and after shots of a poppy, even taking into consideration the fact that the lighting will have changed between the two shots, the second shot is clearly brighter and crisper, with much better definition in the background. And again with this pair of shots, the second image, taken after the lens was cleaned, has a much better contrast. Although this landscape shot isn't a great shot in itself, the lens has rendered the scene perfectly well even on a rather dull and cloudy day. And for this rather mysterious landscape shot, taken at water level in a slightly overgrown pond, there's a rather nice and gentle bubble bocker going on in the background, which is really quite pleasant. Of course, I bought this lens primarily for shooting video, so here are a couple of test clips. The second clip in particular just wouldn't have been possible before cleaning. I was pointing more or less towards the sun, and it would have just been a nasty milky hazy mess before, instead of a shot with some rather nice bokka going on in the background. And finally, we'll take a look at the general characteristics of the lens. Wide open at f2.8, there's quite a lot of vignetting, but that's more or less gone by the time you get to f4. The edges are quite soft at f2.8, and don't fully sharpen up until around f8. 
By f16 the image itself starts to lose some of its punch, but in reality it's unlikely I'll use the lens much above f8. Overall I'm really pleased with the lens now I've cleaned the optics. It was horrible to use before that, but now it gets some really great results. I did also clean the rear elements for completeness, although they didn't really need it. I think that'll do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage repairs coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Thank you.